Welcome back, everybody, to TXP3, and we've dropped all the way into top three now. We just said goodbye to Penge all day. Saints move forward, and we keep the show on the road. Once again, my name is Seymour, and I'm joined back on the desk by Zarin. How you doing, Zare Bear? Uh, feeling good. Uh, it's been a long day already, but a very fun day at that. And, well, we've got down to the top three. These three teams, probably the three teams expected to be in this exact situation. So money secured for all of these squads, but this is a $500 match up for grabs now. Yeah, I mean, it's only up for here for these teams as they're looking for that prize pool. And they're looking how far they can go in uh, one of the, I'd say, the most historic locals in Canada, TXP. Yeah. I mean, this is the third one already, and I'm sure there's only more to come in the future. And I'm excited to see how these players grow uh, even into the next one when we do get to see that. But for now, I mean, St. Clair heading up against the likes of uh, Nobility Rising as they beat Penge all day. They're going to move into the losers round five or the lower finals to have a chance at who's going to play Pulsive waiting for them in the grand finals. And as you take a look, Zarin, at the bracket and how this whole thing has shaped, is there any surprises for you? Um, I, I mean, I think Chaos uh, not not making as deep as we expected to was, was a team, um, you know, a little bit disappointed, uh, I think, with their results they are. But, uh, you know, the likes of Penjay all day, I think, is another surprise on the flip side, who had a very successful tournament, yeah. uh, making it all the way to the top four, obviously, as we just saw on stream. Um, a, a very well-rounded squad, and they played very well throughout this weekend. So definitely should not be holding their heads low. Uh, they came out here in Windsor and impressed. Yeah, I'm very surprised at what we got out of GG Supernova earlier on, almost taking down the likes of Nobility Rising. But Nobility, they prevailed, they moved forward, and now losing in the winner's final, they find themselves on elimination versus the Saints, who they previously played all the way back in winner's round one. We got Rio Hardpoint to click, kick off this best of five Saints, starting from the more preferred side, Zarin, and they're going to be in for the first set of time. Yeah, good start for them. A lot of a lot of kills going in their favor. You see Priestley start 4-0, already working on those streaks make it five now oh boy and st Clair in control of p1 finally priestly gonna get cleaned up so that's a massive kill coming in from conwa to to eliminate those chances of getting streaks yeah and you can already see that risky is trying to work on that p2 rotation there's gonna be a big battle for risky if he is aware of priestly who is hunting him down but he tracks over towards p1 looking to get his teammates in for a little bit of time for scrap but what sonobility has to pay attention to is flooding and hopefully flipping yeah, so off stream last night, they did play this game for winners round one as well. Same map, same mode to start the series off. Nobility with a commanding victory in that one. But right now, back and forth, they go as St. Clair. Gonna drop three, Bendy last one up, able to get two. So it stagnates uh, Nobility just a little bit for St. Clair to get up off of spawn as they try to work towards the front side of the P2. Yeah, so good things here for Nobility as they've set up Bowie soaking up the hill. Nice start for Conway. He's going to take down two. Joko taking down Bendy. Leaves Priestley on a heady. Hopefully able to maybe do some damage. Find an opening for the team to get a break. Still 30 seconds, and I'm sure the Saints want to at least take one more swing at this one. So they're going to risky. Not able to lock down that kill. Nacho and Priestley finding that opening. Wow. They clear out the hill. Only one more member. Conway's going to give it up, and Saints get in the scrap. Yeah, you saw Chaco start to go on the rotation towards the middle of the map, but deciding to wrap back once St. Clair got two dead. And, I mean, great, great pressure towards the front of the time. That's a lot of scrap time that could have gone the way of Nobility. At the very least, they get a couple for themselves, leave some time white, and they're already set up for P3. So this is a tough break here. Bendy with a nice two-piece. Risky trying to slide on in, but Nacho there for the cleanup work. One more player left. That's going to be Bowie, and he's going to drop as well. So a clean four dead wipe here to start things off on P3. Yeah, and we've been talking a lot about Bendy today. Just look at this awareness now to push the agenda in towards mid with Priestley. They're setting up just a line of scrimmage which Nobility Rising, they can't cross. It's another clean four yeah. down. Now it's Nacho's turn to kick it into gear. Three in a row for Enslayer. A team streak going on right now as Saints have Yet to die in a little bit. And this is a chance for a couple streaks to go into their pocket if they can keep this ball rolling. Yeah, very dominant. You see Bowie 0-8 right now without a kill for the side of Nobility Rising. And they only find themselves down 24. But right now, St. Clair with a beautiful P3. Almost perfectly executed. Uh, just no mid-map presence whatsoever. So no, 
for nobility. But we move into this P4. You see these players pushed up and in the ideal setup that you want here, player number five, Conway, gonna be lurking down mid, gonna catch Priestley off guard too, so they have complete control of boxes and St. Clair trying to battle back off of spawns. And for nobility who kind of had null and void presence back on P3, they at least cut every single player down from Saints before they get that cruise missile. So a little bit of time over towards P4. They get broken back in. Saints off the respawn now able to set up all four members here as they have one player, Conwa, looking for the flank. Bendy's going to be watching that. All eyes forward for the Saints. Brandon just trying to stay alive, letting the rest of them chip away at these nobility rising players. One by one, Bowie hoping to get his way in. Choco now struggling to get down this ramp. Choco, last one there. And Slid, Nacho gets around. And St. Clair, I mean, what a streak they're on. Yeah, they are looking very good. Being able to, to string P3 to P4 like they have, even without the rotations to new, they're able to get the first break and nobility just basically had no answer as Priestley trying to get a second on the bridge not going to happen for him but Nacho uh, once again for the cleanup St. Clair a little bit in control right now the battle towards bridge going to be won by the likes of Choco so nobility going to have a little bit more map presence towards P5 yeah and this is kind of where they need to put their foot down and start to rack in some time Brandon working this flank he's going to be traded but Saints do enough to take Nobility Rising out of the hard point for a little bit. So that's going to stall things out on their side as they are down by double the points. Saints leading this into what seems like will be the second set of rotation. But Saints are grouping up for one more hit. Brandon, though, not able to win the fight versus Khan. It's three down in favor of Nobility Rising. They're still keeping Risky in that time. Now, Nobility, they can start looking to set up over towards P1 for the second set. Yeah, that was a big kill from Conwa onto Brandon towards the middle of the map. Would have completely opened up uh, the top bridge side, but no, Chaco going to answer with two with himself. 15 kills for him to start this game. Second most in the lobby next to none other than Priestley, who's had a fantastic weekend thus far. But we're down just about 30 point gap between these two teams going into the second rotation. And right now it's nobility in control. Yeah, calling me surprised Priestley having a good weekend, but yeah. I'm loving what I'm seeing here from Nobility Rising as they were down a full 60 going into P5. Now just trailing by only 10 points. Saints looking to see if they can work this break. Priestley alongside his teammate wow. inside you. A team kill comes through, but still the kills favoring the Saints. Fighting back is risky over towards the bottom of Vending. In for the contention towards Escalators. Nacho almost losing that fight. He's going to end up going down. And off the respawn, St. Clair, all three members going to try to hit this one by one. Brandon now the last one here. He's going to wait for Nacho, but it's too little, too late. Nobility rising. They've clawed their way back, and this is an even game. Yeah, dead even, like you said. St. Clair not in a bad spot, though. They do have complete control of mid now they can start the work the back of the spawns you see it's going to be risky the guy trying to cut them off with conwa following up deep in the back risky does get one conwa as well so there goes that st Clair break attempt brandon last one alive just trying to stay alive for as long as he can that box is spawned coming in again choco pushed up and just doing just enough damage to push St. Clair back and kind of stagnate their push. Yeah, it's a good read out of Nacho. Brandon gets a spawn in the back. And this is a chance to pinch things out if they can time it correctly. Brandon going unnoticed here, but the early shots, he's not able to find the player just yet. Choco's going to be found. Brandon almost finding a second one, but Nacho's there to trade. And he's going to take Nobility out of the hill. Nacho taking down Bowie. One more member. It's Kanwa. Priestley wins that fight. And Saints are in for what looks like 20 seconds to fight for Nobility. They're going to be taking a look at this one. But do they want to dedicate their lives? It seems like they're going to do that. A couple kills. Bendy on the cross. Looking to keep them away for the seven seconds. Nacho's in the time. But even still, it's so scrappy. We're again staying even heading into our P4 or P3. Yeah. I mean, you saw this uh, the first rotation as well, except the, the teams were flipped. St. Clair able to break with about 15 or so seconds left. Um, uh, keeping that time white just a little bit, uh, Nobility did this time around and actually able to take the lead. But now it's Nobility rising, already set up for P3. St. Clair, two players in the back, so it's going to be a 2v2 towards the back of the time. Bendy wins the opening blood. Brandon gets the kill on the time as well. Going to have one more towel here. Gets the second two. Bendy in the back goes huge, but you still see Nobility spawning so deep right because just not enough back control right now for the Saints as they, they know exactly that. 
However, they are getting the necessary kills. Nacho putting in work in mid as well. Yeah, Nacho just looking to cut off those reinforcements. Risky is going to be found, so no more presence in behind from Nobility Rising, but they're still trying to punish these players, whether it's in the hill or on exit. Nobility are making St. Clair fight for every single second in these hills. Over towards P4, it is still a neck and neck game as these two teams, they're going blow for blow, but Nobility, what's keeping them in the second set of rotation is they are doing fantastic fantastic at rotating early now they need to worry about it priestly working the flank and choco he's watching it yep big kill from nacho relieves a little bit of pressure towards boxes allows bendy to get some more shots in everyone else from st Clair spawning up trying to work the back you see risky already posted up able to grab one brandon left alone once more and nobility trying to Eclipse that 200 point threshold here on P4. A complete flip of the script here in the second rotation. It seems like every hill that Nobility was dominating in the first rotation has just completely flipped. And likewise for St. Clair right now, in complete control again is Nobility. As 20 seconds left to go, you're starting to you're going to start to see the, these three players from St. Clair move over towards P5. And St. Clair, they need to start talking about this rotation setting up. You see Benti and Parisi looking to work into a strong position as they have Choco for Nobility rising on five in a row. Nacho's gonna trade it out before he gets that cruise missile. And this is where St. Clair on the setup has to look at putting some points on the board for themselves. This is where Nobility rising started their comeback and St. Clair now need to re replicate that. Absolutely. Good call from Bendy, just trying to keep that time white, but Risky with a big gunfight win there on top bridge. Now Priestley coming off of the spawn, trying to play or get those ticks down on the trophy system. We'll do exactly that. So here comes the flood. Nacho with the opening blood in mid. Bendy slides in, contesting the point for now. Nacho slay over the top rope, trying to get any sort of kill he can. 13 seconds needed now for Nobility to close this one out. And Nacho's still alive. He can contest this one. He's not going to be able to get that kill for the player inside. Six seconds. Bowie just watching over the shoulder of his teammate. Brandon has to touch, but he goes down. And Nobility rising in game number one. Coming out with a mean right hook. What a way to make that comeback. Heading into the second set of rotations. They just continue to show very strong fundamentals within those rotations and it pays off all they need to do are win those early engagements on rotation secure a strong position inside of that setup and it seemed like saints were just constantly struggling at finding the break as soon as they had to force their way in through those small choke points well and you said it nobility <clears throat> excuse me you said it nobility really just rotated early, plain and simple. They, yeah. they kept it simple on their rotations, and St. Clair did exactly that the first half of the game, but they were late on every single rotation, it felt like, towards the, again, the back half of that game, and Nobility took advantage. It, they're just a stronger team in that map uh, when they were already set up. So St. Clair dropping that map, a valiant effort, but just ran out of gas at the end, unable to, uh, it's, it felt like they were playing from behind a little bit for the rest of the way. It really did, it, it really did. And if St. Clair, the hometown heroes, I'm sure Nobility Rising, they are A-OK -okay playing the villains today, taking them down on the real hard point. One of, I'd say St. Clair's stronger hard point maps as well, um, a repeat from what they happened last night after the streams were done over in winners round number one. And that's gonna take us into the search and destroy. And we didn't really get a chance to talk about the map set for this best of five leading in towards the series but we're heading into what is now a triple dose of karachi karachi yes. search karachi control karachi hard point if we go back to that map number four and, and zaren i mean i feel like there's nobody better to ask when it comes down to the map pool for the saints karachi search and destroy how does the team feel well recently anyways and especially towards the end of the collegiate season karachi was a very 50 50 map uh, we, you know, the team started started banning it more more so than uh, keeping it open for teams to play uh, the Saints against. Um, it can go either way. They did beat Chaos in Game Five on it they earlier did. in the day, so perhaps they can ride that wave uh, going into this map number two. But it's really all about aggression, and uh, you know, this sometimes the the Saints lack that that presence in mid and a huge huge key to this map. And honestly, if you are a follower of Collegiate, Mars Hill uh, and Sukri is just a perfect example of how to play that map. Really is. And I was talking to Priestley after that last match was done for them. And uh, he was telling me that everybody loves to run the MCW for the Saints team. And, mm -hmm. you know, if you can see Brandon and Nacho really turn up in these rivals, that's when I think St. Clair play at their best. For a map like Karachi, it almost seems like a need. And for Nobility Rising, these players, they are 
are well practiced on a map like Karachi as well. So I'm sure they're looking to go back to back to maps as well. And I'm, if we see Priestley opening things up with the first blood on the attacking side of Karachi. Smoke's going to go down at B and it looks like Saints want to work a plan. Yeah, a four stack in mid for Nobility to start that round. Kano gets caught out, but now Choco in a great spot. Going to be able to catch this player off the bomb. So now we're back down to a 3v3. Going to get traded up from Priestley coming in from top second. Priestley, Priestley. with his third of the round. Now going to leave Bowie all by himself in a 1v3. They still have to get the bomb down. But Bowie with a lot of work to do. Priestley looking for the ace. Not going to get it. Stevie's going to steal it away, but hey, you know what? You lose map number one. I'm sure the last thing that these players are thinking about is finding aces in these rounds. So no, it oh, was Priestley yeah, up yeah, top. Was, yeah. I, I swear Priestley was uh, elsewhere, but hey, an ace to kick things off here. Almost similar to what we saw last series against Penjol Day on that Rio. It was Nacho who kicked things off to the Rio Search and Destroy with three kills. And this time, Priestley doing one better and getting all four in the round. Exactly what you like to see from St. Clair's veteran. Yeah, absolutely. And an all-important offensive round win to start the game off, too. That's, exactly. that's, that's a good statement win from the side of St. Clair. But Nobility leaning towards his A site, something we don't see very often on a first offense. But here we go. It's going to be a 3v2 towards this bomb site. No one cleared out in... Uh, Bottom keys. Brandon gonna get that info across. Gonna get that chow help it's over the Priestley. top from Priestley with his fifth in a row. Now just gonna play his life a little bit more with those streaks. And it's a bold choice. I mean, this A site's already hard enough to hold on a post plant. Without those trophies, it's even harder. So I'm not sure what Nobility Rising are cooking in this round number two for their offense, but they've lost the wind in their sails and they have to go elsewhere. Still no map control from Conway. He's just been waiting over towards Market, hoping to maybe catch a timing on somebody hitting the flank, but St. Clair have been patient after getting that first kill. They've just set up in the corners, looking to see if they can bait things out, and Nacho's in a great play to find even more. Nacho just laying, nobody's gonna check it, almost gets Ooh. the second one. Bowie trades it out, but Bomb's going down in a three versus two. And Brandon's going to look to stop it. Yeah, Brandon. Brandon's going to get there fast. He's going to shout right on Bomb, but Bendy over the top rope, too, from Satellite. Going to get the kill. Information gained on Conway, trying to get away with his life. Now in a 1v3. 13 seconds left. This one's not going to be a round win for Nobility. No. 10 seconds left, Conway. Just seeing if he can bait anything. Maybe saying, Priestley, come on. Try to get that sixth kill. Priestley's not going to give it to him. And in doing so, Priestley's streak stays alive. Conwa lets the time bleed out. And that's two back-to-back -back rounds from the Saints. I, I really have to wonder, though, what Nobility Rising were thinking with that A hit. They didn't even go for the quick plan. As soon as they got in towards the offices, over towards mailroom, they just stopped. Yeah. Uh, it, as soon as they broke through, they got that control of... Well, the most important place on the A site um, is just, I believe it was Bowie got caught out uh, in the top red window trying to get some info. Brandon there with some good shots and basically changed the whole, changed the entire round. Yeah. The whole dynamic just shifted and for Nobility Rising, maybe no confidence in their call there. Another first blood over towards the Saints, traded out by Choco, and now Conwa is going to jump in towards top third. He's going to find an MCW, maybe looking to do a little bit more damage. Priestley falls before getting the cruise missile, so that's a huge kill from Conwa. Does end up getting traded out, but leaves us in a 2-1-2. Two -two. Interesting spot here for Nacho. Can maybe try to work that bottom trajectory, but I think he's waiting for a little bit more info down mid. They do have 40 seconds to work with. And you start to see Bendy take that bomb over towards the A site. I think Bowie's going to read this a little bit. Waiting for this play up mid. Oh, Nacho's going to get it. that info. So that's huge. If he can manage to get this kill. He, at the very worst, they don't get this kill. And they, well, looks like they're going to try to full wrap towards I B. I love this call. The only thing is, is Choco has been a statue yeah. at B. And Choco's going to have a chance to really stop this plan. I'm not sure if they're going to be ready for it. Choco's going to give them the time of day, and that's the bomb going down. Not a lot of time. Bowie is racing to get there. Choco ends up finding Bendy on the exit. It's going to put Nacho in a one versus two, but with the bomb down, there's a chance. He's going to make the full wrap over towards fire and looking to get that top AC presence. He's going to make it a 1v1. Nacho, 1v1. This great play from Choco up top. Nacho just going to check bomb, going to back down. Choco's still... Waiting for any sort of info down mid. Nacho gonna play the there. Here's the chow out. Nacho gets some shots in. Has to pull out the Renetti. Choco just trying to stay alive. There's 16 no seconds left to go. 
just trying to stay up as long as he can and will finally get the kill. Is he going to be able to get the bomb? It looks like he, he will. Did. He did. Point three. Great win from Choco. Nacho, you think you just got to lay down a little bit more. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what else he could have really done in that. It's situation. a hard call because yeah. that's not an easy fight to take mm -hmm. in towards P1 of Karachi. The head glitch is ruthless, and I'm pretty sure Nacho went up for the challenge, but potentially a prone block there. You saw him yeah. go down a little bit slower. A little, and a little that, bit of a hesitation for sure. It yeah. gave him the chance for that 1v1 and just with milliseconds on the defuse. Nobility Rising put themselves on the board. A huge 1v1 from Choco. Great composure and he gets three in that round as well. So Choco on a spree. Let's see if he can make it something more here as he did get that early information on towards Bendy, but Bendy's going to give up that position. He's going to drop over towards the alley. Yep, Choco with an MVP performance all weekend long for this Nobility team. Continuing to do so here in the Search and Destroy on a three streak. Stopped uh, the pre that potential Priestly streak as well last round, so he's gone wipe that off the table. Conwa getting up into top secret, draws first blood. Nobility with control. Now they can kind of decide where they want to take this. And that is Priestly. I mean, two deaths after finding five in a row. There's a trade for the Saints. So with Bowie going down, it seems like Nobility to Rising are going to bank on this A setup with Conwa towards the top of Soda over towards Castle. It's going to be tough for the retake to stem over from the Soda Alley. So Bendy, there's a lot of pressure on Bendy to make a play on this flank. For sure. And you see Conwa in such a good spot, able to catch these players rotating off of B in towards A. And he caught Brandon with his gun up. As Bendy trying to work this site, gets spotted out by Risky Close, and now a 1v3. 20 seconds left to work, and not a chance there for Nacho as Nobility get their second straight round. That's a great round from Nobility Rising. The early information onto the player into Top Soto from Choco forces Bendy to give up that position, and Kanwa through mid gets all the way up in towards Useless, catches that first blood in towards Top Soto for the player who went to re-chow that. And it opens up the map a little bit. Yes, there was a trade, but the A site was ready for the plants. As soon as that plant happens, it's not easy to get a post plant down because usually players don't have top soda control. But with Conwa in that spot, it forces St. Clair to really adapt to hitting the flank. And as soon as Bendy goes down, it's almost a round lost. 100%. And we talked about the aggression. Right now, Conwa's dictating pretty much everything that happens on the map, putting himself in really good positions to, to catch these players either rotating out or at least off guard looking the wrong way. Joko. Risky gonna get spotted out. Priestly, good kill from him. They, they draw first blood. More info game, but instantly Choco traded out. Another battle on the hill. Nacho has bomb, but Bendy over the top again. Here's a flank. The support. Here's a flank. Brandon reads it, though. And now that's going to leave Bowie 1v3. And they got the information earlier towards Bowie in satellite. He repositions into green, and they found out. Bowie 1 and 4 in a tough spot. Gonna have to shoot some lasers to make this one work. The wall bang's going to bleed him out to 94 health. And... St. Clair, I mean, they have set up perfectly. The bait out. Everybody watching for Bowie to step into the open. And St. Clair putting around there on the board again after, what was that, two in a row from Nobility Rising. Bendy up to five and three here. He's going to get that final kill. And you really see the teamwork of St. Clair showing there. Priestley top 30 in that first blood. And then the way that they finesse Choco in towards the back. It would have been bad if Choco got two kills, but the fact that they limit him to just the one, that was a great round from the Saints. And it, yeah, and, uh, and the play call to not plant the bomb right away, knowing that exactly. there's pressure on bridge, uh, back sandbags as well. Um, good call, whoever did call that out in game, and St. Clair get their third down on the board. Now Bendy being the aggressor over towards this B site. In a good spot too, decided not to hop up on the top second. Smoke's gonna go out, that's gonna allow Nobility oh, to clear Bendy's out that bottom jump. scaffold. Bendy gonna hit this jump though. They're not gonna expect him here. Bendy catches one, can he finish the kill? No, Choco somehow wins the gunfight. Looks like Bendy stopped shooting and now instant advantage for Nobility, but the battle up top, Nacho gets two back. And now a 2v3 again for Nobility. Bomb's gonna go down, Priestley clears him out. And it's Choco, who's been so good all series, all weekend. It's up to him. Nacho makes the play. Yep. Two big kills to swing things back in the favor of the Saints and Conwa. Just a, you know, just a little bit of toe showing there. 
Down with the bomb, Choco. 30 seconds to make something out of nothing, but that's going to make things worse even. 81 HP. Has to wait for the reach in. Nacho is just playing with him, and look at the whole setup right now from St. Clair. Look at you. The, the, the MCWs, they're at such a distance that Choco can't take the heady without losing some health, and now he doesn't even have control of Palm, so he's just got to slide out to his demise. St. Clair, back-to-back -back rounds. Yeah, such a... Unfortunate positioning there from Choco. Not really much you can do in that situation. I mean, you you have three ARs staring down on you <laughs> from all angles. There's just nowhere you can go. Jesus, take the wheel. Yeah. That point. Pretty God. <laughs> but St. Clair, four rounds now on the board and in a map that, again, has been very 50-50 for them throughout the, the, the majority of 2024. Um, they look pretty good right now. But Nobility, they were down two before, have the opportunity to come back and do the exact same thing. Back-to-back -back rounds for both teams, it was. So two rounds each way, and if history is going to repeat itself, we're most likely looking at a nobility round. But first blood onto Risky, not going to help your case. Risky and Bowie struggling so far on the Karachi, and seems like those woes are going to continue. Choco on an island at B, calling for some reinforcements from Bowie, top castle, so... Hopefully, Bowie is going to be able to communicate Brandon here. I'm not sure if Bowie can actually see him from that angle. I think Brandon is still unknown here. And Bowie's going to give this up, so Choco is literally on an island. Yeah. 4v3 now. Expect St. Clair. Here comes the smoke. Choco going in. Kills going through for Brandon. 4v2 now. As St. Clair trying to get this bomb down. Nacho gets one more, and Conwa. Once again, in another impossible situation for these Nobility Rising players. We've seen a couple 1v3 and 1v4 attempts. None doing there for Conwa. And there's three straight. For a map that St. Clair opted to ban towards the end of the season, they look damn good here. Over versus Chaos, KB and Exotic. Yep. They were up 5-1 to one on Karachi Search and Destroy. It went all the way to 10 rounds, so they started to falter towards the end of it. But 5-1 to one just shows the you know how good St. Clair can be at this map. For sure. And they're showing that here, too, with just some very sound offenses. Obviously, there, the nade first blood onto Risky is really going to open up this map. And as soon as there's a lane not being watched, St. Clair are really good at collapsing onto certain players. They isolate Choco in the back, not giving any information away to Bowie. So really leaving him alone. And it's going to be tough for Nobility to come back. They're going to take their sights over towards A again, this time with trophies. But what they don't know, they don't know Brandon is just laying down in pillars. Yeah, Brandon is a very good spot. He can perhaps hit a quick pinch or even catch Risky, maybe trying to play through bottom red. You see Risky going to flank all the way back. There's the opening blood for Brandon. This is huge. Now St. Clair has complete control of the left side of the map and basically making Risky insignificant. So Brandon just needs to stay alive. Another blood could go the way of St. Clair here. There it Risky goes. Has, There's go. Nacho gets one. Brandon with a huge nade, leaving Risky alone. St. Clair on the brink of tying up this series here in the losers' finals. The kill comes in. The defuse coming in as well. And the St. Clair Saints tying up this series. Yeah, what a game from St. Clair to bounce back after that Rio. 6-2 to two on the Karachi. And they look damn good on that map mode combo. Big map from everybody as well. Nobody falling behind for the Saints. And it really just seemed like Nobility couldn't piece it together at certain points. Very, I guess, unconfident calls coming out from their offenses. Their defenses were very kind of drawn thin. Losing those first bloods really forced them to make some rash decisions. And Choco 7-6, and six, a good map, all things considered. Yeah. But you need more from the rest. Bowie and Risky having some stinkers there in the Karachi Search and Destroy. And I think that really gives St. Clair a big momentum boost after what was kind of a drawn-out Rio that just did not look as confident for that St. Clair team. So the fact that they're able to tie this up heading in towards the control, that is a fantastic momentum shift for the Saints. Absolutely right. And and for Risky and Bowie, it just it, it felt like the majority of the time they were kind of on their own and they just weren't in positions to be tradable uh, for their teammates. Obviously, Choco's still having a solid map, like you said, but you know he was put in some, in some uh, 
unwanted situations because Bowie uh, and and Risky were caught off guard. They were first blooded a, a few times throughout that search and destroy. And on the flip side, I mean, with St. Clair, we talked about it being a regular band towards the end of the season. You insert Bendy into the lineup. It's a it's a much different dynamic, especially in search and destroy. And perhaps yeah. uh, he's the one leading the charge uh, with these play calls. And he's just a very intelligent player, so it really helps this team. And you can't forget that you know before. KB, it was Bendy on this roster, yep. and they have time played together. So it's not crazy to see St. Clair after, you know, getting some reps across the weekend. Now towards the end, they're getting better. It was a little bit of a disconnect for them heading in towards TXP3 that they hadn't played all together, and they hadn't really had too much experience heading in towards this tournament after what was the collegiate series and coming towards an end. So mm -hmm. now that they're together, they've played a few matches, they look like they're kicking it back in towards gear. So after a Karachi win in the search and destroy, St. Clair in the lower finals, they tie us up one to one here at TXP3. And we got Karachi control coming up very shortly. Players are taking a break so we're gonna take a break and we'll see you on the other side with more call of duty don't go anywhere folks it'll be short
Welcome back, all you caught enjoyers. TXP3 continues, and we're in the lower finals. Tied up one apiece after St. Clair bounced back in the search and destroy 6-2 to two in the Karachi. It was Nobility Rising walking away with their first respawn, and now we head back in towards the respawns. Zarin, things just not going well for Nobility back in that map number two. Now heading into the control, we're on Karachi. What are you looking for in this team? Uh, I mean, Nobility just has to build some sort of momentum somewhere. And, and uh, me and Matthias talked about this a few series ago on stream. Nobility is so heavily built on momentum. So getting an early round, maybe an offensive win here for them to get kick-started a very strong Karachi control. On the other side for St. Clair, I mean, they were down 0-2 to Penjay. And we're able to rip off three straight rounds. So very strong yeah. team on Karachi as well. That This is going to be an all-out war. Both of these teams... Heavily composed when it comes down to playing Call of Duty. And Nobility off their offense. They get stumped towards B, thwarted at the start of A, but off the respawn. They're back on towards this A stone, working on that second ticket progression. Now over towards the third, but Priestley's going to jump right out there, and they line up. Lovely shots coming out there from Justin Priestley. Choco's going to get finished off, and that's going to send this Nobility team back to the respawn. And with player number seven, Bendy, inside junk. Nobility are forced off those market spawns. This is not looking good for the team. Yeah, they do finally get in. They get that opening kill onto Nacho. Or I believe Priestley it was actually, but Bendy just being a nuisance in the back. And now that's going to send Risky just to turn around, distract him from the A site for the time being, as it's going to be player number six, Brandon, inside. Bendy still being annoying in the back, able to get this kill. He does too. Will get traded out. But again, it pulls Risky away from that top third power position and allows St. Clair to move up. Trade's going back and forth, though. Yeah, and this is Nobility kind of lifting the weight off their shoulders. Choco's going to put down a couple kills, three in a row. That's going to open up the lane to move over towards this B zone. He's going to stop the time soon at 31 seconds on B. Choco here with a stack, but it's Nacho looking to take these members away with the help of Priestley. The team shots remove that pressure. A zone gets secured. Minute 30. Lives, though, favoring the Saints. A yeah, very good decision there for St. Clair. Just to give up a shift their attention towards the B site. They get the two kills needed. Now they can have all of their attention. And there's a huge kill on the Risky who is pinching the back. Priestley gets one, gets the second as well. He's on a three streak, moves up to seven and four for him. Choco coming in through the mid uh, is going to get cut down by Brandon. So Map control right now for St. Clair. You see that left side open up just a little bit. Nacho's going to have to go huge. This is where you're looking for in the defense oh. layers of defensive players to get that aggression in. Nacho, unfortunately, not going to find that kill for the Saints. And that's going to open things up for Nobility. Now working out of their spawn in towards fire. Connor was going to end up going down. Brandon's going to look to reposition here. Trades back and forth from both sides. But St. Clair, they're okay with finding those trades. Lives are down to six for Nobility. So they do not have that luxury of giving up these lives for free. They need to look to bank together, get this fort down, and stack the zone. Yeah, you see Bowie. Thought he didn't see Priestley there, but he eventually does, so that's gonna open up that yellow lane. And now Nobility are able to pinch from a whole buttload of angles as Bendy in the back of the cut down as well. That's four and three stack coming in. Last one up is Priestley, and this is looking like a nobility rising win unless Priestley can go huge. Does manage to get one. Brandon coming over the top, though. Able to get two. St. Clair can get in. Risky on time gets two. 3v5 now. Tick coming through. Bendy just trying to stay alive just long enough for his teammates to come off a spot. Able to get two as well. Bendy gets one back, and now a 1v5. It was a 3v5 on point, down to a 1v5, and St. Clair barely hang on. It's all down to Choco here. One last play. Nope. He's found. And St. Clair hold on to the defense. Things getting scary over towards B. I mean, Nobility, all they needed was that one break. Four go down. Uh, St. Clair get those close spawns in. So that Nobility team not just fully able to set up inside that B zone like you would have hoped to. And you get a couple of kills to get over that half hole. Things get a little bit mixy. The zone just does not progress the way you want it to. And they battle back in towards it, winning a big defensive round. Nobility... Looking to now do the same as so they swap over towards defense. Risky having a lot better of a game here. Nine and seven leading in kills for Nobility Rising. Let's see if he can keep this up for the team as St. Clair. They're going to stack this A zone. All four members are here. 
Yep, four stack, the St. Clair special, but Risky over the top. Bowie gets two back for himself. Only able to get, oh, they do get the second. Oh, no, they, they didn't quite get, get the, the second, second tick. tick. So, crisis averted for nobility. They get the necessarily kills. Bowie goes huge with a four piece to start off this round. And now St. Clair in a bit of a spawn trap trying to work their way out the left side. Yeah, here's the tough part is that you have Conwa for free in junk, uncontested off the start. So now you're spawning in no man's land. And Saints Gaming have so much ground to cover. Priestley looking to clear top third. Everybody working out of market. Priestley above is going to spot Choco trading out for the teammates. Risky is here now, but again, it's Brandon coming away with a couple kills. That's going to open up A for potential to stop this time at 42 seconds. You still have Conwa in junk, but this team, Streak. they need to stack this zone. Streak's going to get called in from Nobility. St. Clair, they are moving away. Streak's going to hit the wall, but still Brandon is caught by it. Risky is going to take a second went down trying to move over towards this B zone and again the time is dwindling only 30 seconds left yeah I, I think that was a good streak usage there from Bowie to get Brandon off the time again just clears him right off ticks ticks the time down even more they're gonna be a two stack and Bendy and Nacho are actually putting in work towards the back spawn of nobility so it's gonna get capped and St. Clair have an opportunity to shift over towards B one player already through 2v2 in now in towards red big win from Bowie Conway will get traded out towards junk so again just one player through, Priestley trying to play these spawners. They don't know he's here either, so right now Nobility just trying to play this one straight up. Yeah, St. Clair, they just need to take their time. Priestley's going to spot the player down low. He has so much zone control with this position. But three go down for Nobility. St. Clair going to jump on this zone, and they have three members to stack it, so I'd like to see all three jump on this point inside Cafe. Off the respawn, Nobility taking some height over towards Soda. One goes down, but Priestley's going to piece together two. They lie up for the veteran, but he's not able to get anything more. Conwood trades things out. It takes St. Clair off the zone, only getting that one tick. And at the moment, Nobility have that advantage of ticks five to four. Yeah, I think you saw Priestley feel the pressure that he knew Conwood was around somewhere, but it looked like he thought he was a lot closer than he was. Nevertheless, Conwood picks up the huge three piece and Nobility regain control. There's Bowie with a huge two. You can hear him right through the broadcast booth there on main stage. Yeah, he's getting loud. Yeah, I mean, he's got a very powerful voice. You can hear it throughout the <laughs> venue all weekend long. And Nobility with a stronghold so far, but there's the two ticks coming in. So right now, we're tied. Yeah, I'm loving the noise from Bowie after hearing Ooh. him get loud against GG Supernova earlier today. He's bringing the heat versus the Saints. One last chance for the Saints here with 18 seconds left. Connor was going to jump on in. Priestley gets cut behind the desk, but there for the trade is Brandon Choco into the window. 18 seconds still, and the nade's going to clean it up. St. Clair fighting tooth and nail for this offensive round win, but it's not going to come just yet. 10 seconds left, and only two players to make it happen. Priestley and Nacho, can they make the impossible possible? Yeah, Nacho gets the first blood. He needs to go right to time, though, but it's going to be Conwa there to cut him down and no ability to answer with a defensive round of their own, but we are dead even, Colin. Dead even into the defenses for Karachi. It's not every day these days that I get to see back-to-back -back defensive yeah. rounds on these maps, but you have to give it to both of these teams for playing how patient they are on those retakes over towards the B zone, not throwing their lives one by one at this and getting caught in those traps that you can as soon as the players get set up. And I'm, you saw that versus St. Clair and the way that they handled the retake over to B and Nobility Rising do the same thing. Lots of control over towards Boss, pushing into red, making sure they have the, somebody watching watching through mid so that nobody hits that flank from Saints. Oh my god, they're doing it right back. The Both. four the four stack coming in from Nobility. St. Clair not expecting this. First blood does come in from Bendy though, and Priestley able to get one back, but there's the second tick, potentially the third, as Brandon trying to fly over the top, finally taking them off, but no, they do actually capture the point. A little taste of your own medicine there from Nobility Rising as they already have a member on to B as well, Conwa. Hits the overextension, and now if the respawn, Nobility Rising can come to the aid. Priestley's looking to at least wrap around, see if he can catch some of these players unnoticed. And Cotton was still soaking up this progress. Cotton was going to get two big kills on the inside of this, looking to reposition through the door. Cotton gets three. 
Brandy's gonna put that one to rest, so you have to look at Nobility off the respawn there. Only one tick at B, but still two minutes, lots of time. Yeah, Bendy a little bit late to the party, missed those two players already pushing in through keys and choco going huge once again for this team There's in the stack. back a huge two-piece the stack coming on the in bendy just staying alive conwa spots him out and this is looking all but over for st Clair in this round still fighting choco's here but he's falling last ticket progression Connor with a nade lands and he takes down priestly so everybody from nobility all they have to do is jump on this zone and they go back to back. Oh my goodness, what an offensive round from Nobility Rising. And that was just full steam ahead from start to finish there. The four stack onto A. St. Clair not able to do that last time they tried it, but even still that transition over towards B. Conwa getting some big kills on that point just to send St. Clair in chaos off respawns. Yeah, I mean, uh, unbelievable play call from Nobility to pull out the four stack right back at the Saints. And, uh, well, St. Clair not expecting it. They get the, the first two ticks in and able to get the third just a little bit after. So Nobility take advantage of that and shift over to B and just we really go. dominate the gunfights. Not quite a four stack here, but, a, well, team kill coming in. That's not how you want to start if you're Nacho, and he's going to get cleaned up as well. So that's going to leave two players left. You're on the A point. Bowie gets two more. Looking for that third. Risky from top third. Going to pick up that kill as well. And now St. Clair in a bit of a pickle. That Risky slowed down a little bit since that round number one. But the rest of the team, and including Risky, just doing enough on the map to keep this lead. 22 and 19 from Risky leading with the rest of his his team. So, you know, maybe I just saw those numbers a little bit wrong on it. Bowie's going to clean up the player going towards top third. And St. Clair with the junk spawns. They're going to look to overextend over towards this B zone. All four members are going to hit this together. Yeah, you see first player in. That's going to be Priestley. Gets through. Nacho with a huge first blood. Conwa spotted jumping down from top yellow. That's another big kill from Benny. No pressure now. Nacho gets a third. Choco the last one up. They're going to four stack this. Or at least, at the very least, three stack this. This might be a B capture here. Nobility looks like they're already going to chalk it up. However, Priestley does drop. Oh, sorry, Brandon does drop, but Priestley, who else? Three straight kills for him. Nacho please, picks up the fourth, and that's a B cap. Yeah, Nacho's looking for more, too. Uh, the respawner is not going to be suspecting of Nacho getting that aggressive. So over towards A, this transition is flawless. You have two members able to jump on. A player into church. Uh, Nobility, they have to rush to this one, but it's just going to be one by one. They're funneling into it. I'm not sure if anybody's going to get here in time. Wow, here they come, B-Cut, not in time, it's St. Clair, start with a B-Cap, a clean shift over to A, thanks to Nacho cutting those players off of spawn. And that's just something you normally see in Karachi, which we haven't really seen either of the teams make the mistake of not having someone in junk, mm -hmm. blocking those spawns for the, uh, the offensive team to spawn up in towards that P5 area for hard points. But St. Clair, they get all four members spawning in junk together after getting four wiped on A. And they make the brilliant kind of easy decision to head to the B zone, stack it, clean it up first off. And with everybody just slaying out on Saints, Nobility really couldn't do anything to battle out of their spawn there. Yeah, another great judgment call from St. Clair. And I mean, just a just a, a mistake there from Nobility, not blocking junk and forcing them to spawn so deep in P3. But... St. Clair, they take advantage regardless. They are going to be back on the offensive side, though, as just falling behind in the kills category. But if Priestley's shooting like that, it won't matter. Here on the offensive side, they get the first take in. Bowie spotted up top, able to get one. Choco on the bridge side, gets one back as well, and Risky coming in for support. Yeah. Couple kills there for the Saints. Second tick is in. Risky is going to take one last shot at this. As you know, Conway wow. isn't moving from junk. He has <laughs> yeah. sealed the fate of this A zone, which should be captured soon. They didn't finish capturing that zone, but St. Clair feeling the pressure. They're going to jump up for now, I guess, and do a little bit of slaying. Yeah, someone capped that point. Another, another win by Risky, gonna stop it from being okay. capped. Finally, Priestley jumps in and gets that point himself. You see Bendy in such a good spot, but Conwa in yeah. a good spot himself. Even better spot, you might say. Conwa has a chance to really dial it in for yep. the rest of the team as Bendy's gonna make an issue over at B. Priestley and Bendy gonna jump on, and stack is out. Can they find the kills? Yeah, for the first one at least. Now it's Conwa's turn. Round through the back door. Conwa's gonna take out Priestley, but Bendy trades it out. Looking for Bendy a second goal. one, but Bowie says no. Over the half wall, only one tick at B. 
Brandon's here to look for more. Yeah, not a bad spot for Brandon, but he's gonna have to back down. Huge kill on the back, has support for Priestley. Second tick about to come through. Game three on the line. Second tick comes in, the stack in as well. Brandon with the huge kill. Coming in, Priestley again in the back. Last player alive, gonna get cut down as well. And St. Clair with a huge offensive win back to back to take game three. Karachi is just treating this team very well as St. Clair put together a couple of offensive wins there. and. Yeah, I mean, you really look at numbers like this from Priestley, 32 and 23. Last time they played, they, when they go down 0-2, I mean, Priestley finished off that clutch win versus Penjol Day, 27 and 33. This time, leading the lobby in kills. An absolutely wow. standout performance from Justin Priestley on the Saints. And you can see, I, you talk about this team, albeit going up against a tough opponent like Nobility, still the vibes looking to be high on their side of the stage. 100%. And again, the, the St. Clair is a very, another very momentum-heavy team. And, you know, when the wins start to pile up, uh, the confidence, when they play with confidence, that's the key to their success. And right now they're doing exactly that. And they, they've struggled against this team uh, at past events even as well. Back in Kettering in, in March, uh, just could not win a respawn against this team. But here we are. They struggle in the first hard point, but come out and win two straight maps, including a game three control. Yeah, that's big for the Saints as they kind of get at least past that first hurdle that they weren't able to do so in the winner's round one where they played off the stream last night it was a 3-1 victory for the likes of nobility rising so already taking that second map control it's a huge swing of momentum for this team and we got a little bit of a look there from nobility rising on the cams and it seemed like they were a little bit kind of distressed after that loss yeah. that you know nobody in a good mood there everybody's serious i'm sure there's some things to talk about heading into our karachi hard points and i think it really comes down to just some of those clutch plays some of those yeah. plays in towards the end weren't there inside of that karachi control especially back in that round number four somebody you know you get that four wipe on that a zone nobody's at junk forcing those spawns over towards junk giving saint Clair that opportunity is just something you cannot do if you're a team like Nobility, who is as practiced and as together as they are, this team has tons of experience playing together, whether it's challengers, whether it's locals, no matter where they are, this team has that experience to play that cohesive Call of Duty that we are used to. And you just cannot see mistakes like that yeah. from that team. So heading back over towards Karachi, and this time going in towards the hard point, I need to see a little bit more teamwork coming out from these players. The slang's there. It's just putting it all together. 100%. And, and the deeper you get into these local tournaments, whether it's a major or a local, you know, the skill gap just gets so much tighter and you start to play uh, way better teams um, the deeper you go into the tournament, obviously. And with that, you just can't afford to make those mistakes, like you said. And Nobility makes one mistake there in round four. St. Clair able to pounce on it. And again, it looked like they just rode the wave. They get the four dead. They shift over towards the B site and some huge kills. I mean, you saw Brandon, 17 and 21, he finished the map, but a huge three pace towards the end to secure the win. Nobility rising, dialed in to their monitors as we're heading into this Karachi hardpoint. St. Clair in the lead as they go back to back in the search and the control. Map number one, Rio. It just seems like Nobility has Saints number. Can they keep that statement true into this game mode? As P1's gonna open up, St. Clair starting on the less preferred side. Not gonna be able to get top third right away, but still the kills are found. Nacho and Priestley gonna open things up. Bendy hops in the hill and Priestley makes it three down. Yeah, that's a good stun out of Bendy. He's gonna get that info towards Coop as well, but just gonna stay down. Doesn't have a lot of help around him, so it's up to him to pick up one, but Bowie actually with the teammate. As St. Clair on the, on the uh, unpreferred side, like you said, soaking up a little bit of time here. This is good time, even on P1. You're already set up for new with 20 seconds left to go, and Priestley just going huge once again. Already four kills in this one. And after that break off goes your way, you're in a fantastic spot for St. Clair because now you don't have to worry about the rotation. You're getting tons of time off of P1 wow. and Nobility. I mean, they are completely shaken up after that Karachi control loss. Finally, a little bit of life shown as they break back in for a couple of seconds before this rotation, but they need to put the pedal to the metal and see 
see if they can get in on this second point as quick as possible. With Conway going down, that should slow them down as well. Yeah, like that decision to work mid if you're nobility. Uh, you know that St. Clair's going to be prepped and pushed up already into keys. They win mid control, they get the kills finally, and now they can break from all different points. But Priestley is an unstoppable force, able to get two. Last one alive is going to be Chaco, just contesting the point now from the cubby side. Gets one more. Colin's going to come in, gets a turn and burn. Priestley going huge, nine and two already. We're not even, ha we just eclipsed halfway through P2. The game started. <laughs> oh, Priestley's hit form at exactly the wrong time for Nobility Rising. They need to silence this member. Conway is 0-6 to start this hard point. It just seems like somebody is always lagging behind for this Nobility team in the past three maps. Now facing a 70 point deficit heading into P3. They have the rotation, something that they were really good at back on Rio. They need to put the kills behind it as well. Bendy looking for a way around it. St. Clair setting up for the pinch. Yeah, Bendy goes so huge. He somehow gets spotted out, but stays alive long enough. That player doesn't see him. He opens up junk. Now St. Clair flooding in from the right side as well. They can just flood in from both sides. You see how, Bow how stuck Bow Bowie is inside the point. Priestley gets one. Brandon gets another. Conma finally with his first blood of the game. Make it his second. And Nacho just hunting him down. Good, good. Uh, work out of him just staying alive for now keeping the time white. Yeah, St. Clair just making it so comfortable to breathe on this point as they collapse at the perfect timing together. Now Nacho in behind, staying alive, holding down the backside of this point for the rest of the team. Inside is Choco, trying to get more time for the side of Nobility Rising and it looks like the scrap will go your way so a sigh of relief for Nobility Rising after P3 is going to get them the most amount of time that they've had so far inside of this map and it just started. Game's not done just yet. Now we look to the rotation over towards P4. And this is not something that you see the Saints get a lot of time on often. Yeah, I mean, you, you hardly see a lot of teams get a lot of time on this hill specifically. It's so easy to keep it white. You're really just battling for map control. And you try to play, you know, two, three dead. Then you hop on the point, get a few seconds, hop off, recollect. And St. Clair doing exactly that. Nobility with a huge P3 win to get themselves back into this game. But St. Clair in complete control of P4. That's a couple of kills for the Saints. Make it three down. Chance for them to jump on time. This is a split spawn for Nobility Rising with how disconnected those deaths were and they're going to be able to collapse back onto these members. Make sure that this 20 seconds does not go to the Saints for free. Bendy still fighting for the spree. Four in a row. He's going to jump on down. Wow. Nice shots from Bendy. Five in a row. Looking for that cruise missile over towards P5. A couple of things you can take away from Nobility Rising here is that they have kept this to a 40 point deficit so there is still a chance to flip this lead on this rotation. Yeah, Choco in a bit of trouble here. Tagged up heavily in the back. A big battle going to ensue, but he actually wins it as well. Uh, I believe that was player number one. Yeah, Conwell wins that second battle in the back. So that could have gone much more disastrously for, Sa or for Nobility had St. Clair broken on through. But huge kills out of the two core pieces of this team allowed Nobility to retain control of P5. But here comes the pressure down mid. Choco gets killed in the back. Bowie gets one, but the team kill comes through. Priestley sliding into the point. Has a 1v1 on time. Wins it. Looking for that second player. Tags him up. But the trade comes through from Nacho. He's just got to stay alive as everybody else coming off spawn from both sides. St. Clair battling back and forth, but right now Nobility getting a decent amount of time here on P5. Brandon not able to win that fight versus Bowie. 11 seconds left on this hill. 20 point difference between both of these teams as we're heading into the second set of rotations of this Karachi hardpoint. Nobility rising. They were down 70 points heading into P3. So all things considered, this is a win for them. Now they can start turning things around like they did back on Rio. Second set was a lot better for this Nobility team once they started to get that comfort inside of their gameplay. So I'd like to see these ARs start to heat up and start to get some time on the board here. You have a great setup at P1. Yeah, Conwa grabs one, gets into the point. St. Clair not being able to really read uh, the, the, you know, however many players were down. So they don't, they actually allow Nobility to get about 12-ish seconds for free there as Bendy works towards top third, grabs one. Looking for that pressure towards new, but Brandon on the point, getting the kills too. 23 seconds here, St. Clair soaking up as much as they can, keep this lead. Nobility opting out of this P1 break to send some bodies over towards the rotation, but here they're met by the Saints. Nacho and Priestley finding those kills, still f finding some struggle 
against the rest of Nobility. So this is still a toss-up. Who's going to get this time? Priestley's going to box himself in. See if he can make this a tough kill. But Risky's going to get the better timing. And Nobility, they still get that initial time. This is a great moment for them. Yeah, and you see the rest of St. Clair just late on the rotation. Nobility spawning closer towards that junk side uh, on the back D3 side, able to get through just a little bit quicker than they are. Nacho knows where that player is and shuts down Conwa, so a huge kill from him. Now they can get over that half wall while Priestley works around the back, trying to contest this time. 13 point game, Priestley trying to do anything he can. Spots one, grabs one, now pulls out the MCW, but Choco coming in through keys, cleans him back up. Brandon needs to stay down, the last one alive. Nicey player number seven, Bendy's gonna start to work his way towards P3. Yeah. Has nobility about to take the lead. Yeah, for the first time on this Karachi, nobility flipped the lead in their favor and they're dominating the rotation here. They have a chance to at least set up for P3, but they're gonna have to find these kills as well. Choco and Risky together. Top third control for Risky, looking for more down the stairs. Brandon wiped away. And in towards this hard point, Bendy. Can he make this a tough gather? No, he can't. Only able to get the one. Connor was going to jump this time. Now Nobility's lead is starting to grow. Yep, that stun from Nacho going to bounce off his teammate. And you see how deep Choco is playing in the back. Actually, that's risky this time. Same, very similar setup here we saw from Nobility in the first rotation. Going to allow them to soak just so much time on this P3 as Conway going to sit inside, grab one. St. Clair need to start thinking about new, but you're not going to hesitate and, and try to push old here. No, maybe a couple kills. Maybe you take the member out of the hill. Anything really to fight back versus this complete swing of momentum that Nobility Rising have found in the second set of Karachi. Saints are going to be wiped away. They get the spawns over towards Bridge, so they should be able to set up here, but they have to worry about Bowie hitting this flank. Doesn't seem like anybody's going to be watching it. Bowie's going to go to the top castle. He could do some serious damage here. Yeah, Bowie in a very good spot. Tags went out, can't finish the kill though, so that's going to be information gained. You see Priestley just back off a time. Does get one back for himself, and wow, good kill from Nacho. Bendy pushed up as well. That leaves one, that's Conwa. Down in low money, gonna get taken out too. And well, Nobility have, for the most part, dominated the money hills here in the second uh, rotation. But right now, at St. Clair, P4 is their main storyline. They've been able to soak up so much time. Yeah, on both rotations. So Saints, at least something to write home about within this map. A chance here to cut this lead down to size into a manageable spot heading into P5. But Nobility Rising, they have the rotations again. And Risky is just being so annoying at old, not allowing St. Clair to get this time for free, just forcing these players off respawn, again, delaying that wrap over towards new. And with this for Nobility Rising, the early setup is going to get them so much initial time. Saints, they're going to be looking at a 30, maybe 40 point deficit heading into this P5. Yep, 30 points indeed. Bendy trying to work the back. They do get that opening blood, but they need to win these back spawn battles. But Bowie wins that one. Now he's going to have support. Bowie wins actually both. Might be able to pick up Nacho as well. Nacho needs to go huge for St. Clair. Does manage to get one just trying to stay alive. Bowie Whoa. able to get the third for him. That's three in a row. And now Nobility 20 seconds away. It's been P5's the main story. And St. Clair with 20 seconds left. They're spawning so far away. Bendy's the only one that could put a dent into this one. See if he can make a way into the team 10 seconds though to make it happen yep bendy work in the back able to grab one nope can't finish the kill quite yet choco gets two for himself bendy slides in gets one three seven seconds remain on this time they can still win it here bendy gets some shots in but conwa over the top of that ar shuts him down no one near the point and it's no ability rising with the game four win and we go to a game five we saw it earlier today no matter how much fight Nobility is given. They prevail so often. GG Supernova. I mean, they pushed them to what a 250, 249 to 238 rotation on Vista, and they said no problem. Versus the likes of uh, Pulsive and God Bowser, they go down 2-0, almost make the reverse sweep. And Saint Clair taking both Karachi Search and Karachi Control. It's not going to phase them just yet. Nobility Rising continues to stay alive here at TXP3 and they are forcing us a game five search and destroy both of these teams they are playing so well 
today so well in this lower final and it is tough to really decide who is going to have that chance to move into the grand final for a rematch versus Pulsive. Yeah, I mean, we'll find out shortly, obviously, but I mean, St. Clair, it, they just got out-rotated yet again in the yeah. second half of the hard point, plain and simple, and uh, failing to con really cash in on any money hills, the P3 and P5 specifically, Nobility got almost full 60s both times, and that's really what ended up costing them the game, but Nobility doing a great job of rotating early on, on both sets of hills in both rotations, and that's how they stole the game. Yeah, it's just fundamental card from the likes of Nobility Rising. I mean, it's what you expect from this team who's just been playing so long together. Yeah. Whether it's locals, whether it's online. I mean, these players have that experience together, even on the side of Saints. So this is a banger lower finals match. And we're getting ready for that game five. And I think these players are going to take a little bit of a break. So we're going to step away as well as we get things set up for the search and destroy. Winner moves to the grand finals. It's going to be a fun one. We'll see you soon.
what's going on here everybody welcome back to the txp3 stream here at c saints gaming ca it's been a fun day so far but into the lower finals zarin this is a battle we got saint Clair looking to make the lower bracket run and then nobility rising who beat St. Clair in winner's round one, moved all the way to the winner's final, and then dropped down from Pulsive, beating them. We're going to a game five. Both of these teams fighting for their lives inside of this tournament, and it's going to take us to Invasion, Search, and Destroy. Yep, fighting for their lives indeed. Right now, St. Clair going to have to pull off the Neslo to secure this win and move on to the grand finals. Nobility trying to pull off two in a row after being two down in this series. St. Clair taking this bomb over towards B. Yeah. B site for them, no trophies for Bowie, so he's got to watch out and play a little tiptoe around the nades. It's Bendy looking for some information. Here's the stun. Not sure it's going to connect over towards Bendy, but Choco's going to be called for the wrap. See if he can reinforce this. Smoke's going to go out. St. Clair, they want to collapse. See if they can find it. And before Bowie goes down, he takes it down. Nacho. Choco's going to find a timing through. Can he do some more damage? It doesn't seem like he wants to dedicate himself just yet. And he's going to just delay this bomb plan, which is exactly what you like from Nobility Rising. Yeah, Brandon just trying to stay alive. Not going to happen. So now Priestley going to take it down to a one versus one. He does have bomb in hand though so he will have a free plan on a if he elects to do exactly that expecting this wrap coming in from choco but choco just staying put for now priest are going to get this bomb down 45 seconds now for Choco to retake. I like this call from both sides. Priestley wraps it and Choco just sits and waits. 38 seconds to the retake. Choco looking to be that playmaker. And it looks like these two are just missing out on each other. 30 seconds for Choco to figure this one out, but I think Priestley has made the right call, setting up over towards the mid tank. Yeah, it's a good, it's a very powerful head glitch. He can gain so much info as well. Nothing gained from either side, though. I don't think Priestley saw him. Actually, he might have based on the minimap. Yeah, he did. Great read from Priestley. Great clutch. And St. Clair take round one. That's tough for Choco at that point. It's a game of hide and seek. Yeah. So many angles that you have to check, and, and Priestley could be literally anywhere. Uh, that is the bane of giving up that 50-50 plant over towards A. Choco made a decision, give, gave up both bomb sites. The only issue was he didn't expect him to actually push all the way over towards A. So it's a fantastic round there from Priestley, finding those two last kills to win that round, getting out from dark for the rest of the team. And you thought for a second, Nobility Rising could have clutched up there, but back over towards the defense, now looking to bounce back. Find themselves around. They're going to take this over to Ports B as well. See if they can get rid of these trophy systems. Yep, see Priestley going to get back down just a little bit on the left side. Might be able to catch off player off guard, but no. He actually got tagged up heavily, so he needs to play his life. Does not have any reinforcements with Stun's him either. going to help. Yeah, the stun is huge. So again, more info. You saw that player cross. Priestley still stuck by himself. St. Clair need to start moving to send in some reinforcements. One would be good, two would be fantastic. Losing your teammate might be a little detrimental. So Bendy goes down and that's gonna put some more pressure here onto Priestley, calling for some help. Brandon looking to assist and Priestley just doing it all himself. Everybody's flooding in towards wow. Justin and he is ripping them to pieces. Priestley finds three and he's gonna get all four. That is two rounds now that Priestley has drawn aces here in the lower finals. Wow, unbelievable. And he gets the streak off of that as well. Disgusting. Two rounds in, unbelievable shots. No business winning that gunfight, Priestley is, but he is shooting. He came to play this series, and St. Clair, 2-0 up. 2-0 up. Nobility Rising definitely not accounting for Priestley to shoot like that, but, I mean, sometimes you got to just think that eventually... Eventually, he's going to turn up. 2-0 for Saints. Where is the answer for an ability? They're going to double stack over towards B. Expecting that quick plant. They're going to send Conway in towards Broken. I, I don't think the Saints actually saw that. So Conway can actually make this a little bit of an issue. You just yeah. need Bowie to stay alive on that tank. You cannot give up that first blood with how far Conway is pushed up. Yeah, and you see Risky as well, trying to play for any sort of info towards the backside of A. He did give up a lot of positioning there. Like the fact that he was pushed up in A control, you could see any crosses uh, c coming through uh, into DVD, into Cafe, or anything of the sort, but he's just gonna back on down. You see a conservative play style coming out of Nobility. Brandon getting tagged up, so Nobility, a lot of control on the map right now, looking very strong. 
They're gonna fight back for middle tank and Risky's gonna fall. Brandon now leading the charge over towards this A site plant. They're going to maybe be able to with that smoke helping. Kanwa, even with the smoke down, he's going to finish the kill onto Brandon. Nacho making the flank, but the bomb gets planted, and Kanwa is blowing this up. Trades come out, but it's too late. It's a 2v2. Nacho has mid tank, but Priestley's all alone. He's going to drop it. Choco. Oh my word. I got to wow. see those shots yeah. back. Let me see that final kill cam. Unreal shots from Choco. It, it all started with Kanwa there. But as we'll see, Choco in the kill cam just knew exactly where he was. Pre-fire shots in. I don't think he missed a bullet. We're going to get a little replay here. I guess not. Uh, unfortunate there, but Choco with a huge kill. But that all started with Kanwa in getting the first blood onto mid-tank, then working his way through into cafeteria. Yeah. First two kills, massive for Nobility. Brilliant. Brilliant from Nobility rising. Priestley finally gets shut down. A little bit of a highlight there for Nobility. They get their round on the board, and they avoid going down three rounds in a row. So back over towards the attack. What are we going to see from this team? Bomb's going to lead over towards Cafe. Only person here is Nacho, and Connor was going to check that. So that's a big first blood. That's going to draw these players off of B. A little bit of dark control. They don't have mid tank, so Nobility has the setup here. And they're going to fight for this one. Kanwa, a second kill in the round. Priestley does get the kill on Choco, but still numbers here. Bendy watching for the bomb plant. This is a huge spot from Bendy. Get so much info. Able to get the kill, too. So that's bomb down. Can't stay alive, though. Good shots from Bowie. Good recognition to work his way all the way around the deep left in A Street. Priestley now, 1v2. And he's got timing. They don't know where Priestley is. Bomb's getting planted. Priestley doesn't see that, but as soon as he sees that bomb down, mid tank is going to help out for himself. Finding Bowie is going to turn this into a 1v1. 9 and 1 from Priestley, looking for those double digits. It's a game of cat and mouse right now, and right now, Nobility, they just need to hide. The time is in their favor, and the ring around the rosy, it's stopped for Priestley. There's so many places to check. We saw this from Nobility back in round number one, and Priestley's falling into the same patterns. 18 seconds, he has to choose. He's going to hop the bomb, and Risky checks it. Easy as could be for Risky in the clutch. Yeah, very well played by Risky. Able to get away with his life. Almost didn't, but managed to get away. Ran right through mid, played into in through freezer. Just, again, like you said, ring around the rosy, but Risky comes out on top. Very nicely played by him. So it's back-to-back -back rounds from Nobility Rising. It does come to a clutch again, so you can see how hard St. Clair are forcing this for Nobility, but I'm liking the changes that we get. Khan was looking a little bit more confident in these challenges for his first blood. He draws two that round to start off that last one, and I would like to see that from Nobility a little bit more. They're going to stack the A site this time. With Bowie, again, left on an island over towards B. Priestley's going to spot that. Conwa in their spawn. Yep, Conwa playing so, so quick. Going to be able to catch that player off guard. Brandon almost gets the first blood, but Conwa, great kill out of him. Just going to throw that smoke down, escape with his life. And now look at this. Look at the line of scrimmage for Saints. They're trapped in the top yep. right echelon of this map. Yeah, St. Clair trapped, trying to work their way up to B Street. That's going to be information gained from Choco. Seeing those two St. Clair players drop, uh, cross, Risky as well, gets a stun in. Bendy does get first blood onto B, so they do have a bit of control, yeah. and perhaps to get the bomb down. I mean, trapped, but trapped in a winnable spot now for the Saints. Bowie would have loved to get that kill onto Bendy, force a little bit more out of the Saints. But now you're going to have to play for the retake as soon as those lethals and tacticals are gone. Saints going to go for the plants here, and Bendy has to stay alive. He's not going to dedicate himself just yet. Flank coming in from Risky slowly, but surely they have the time to unfold. Yep, Nacho looking for his first kill of the game. Bomb's going to go down. Risky with a huge plank could potentially make or break this round. He's no, seeing nothing. Yeah, no info given yet. Good job. For, well, there's Nacho's first kill, and Priestley follows that one up. Bendy once again, so a nice shared kill feed right there. Kills coming in fast. Risky gets picked up on the flank, and St. Clair answer back. And I hate to really put it all onto one player, but 
Bowie back tractor needed that kill onto yes. Bendy. They had St. Clair trapped. It was tough to get to the bomb site, and they just let them walk all over B. And the fact that Bowie doesn't get that kill, Saints just able to spend the rest of that time for their attack, waiting for Nobility to make another mistake. And everybody was waiting for Risky to make that play. But it was taking so long for Risky to find anything that Nacho hits the flank through dark, and nobody suspects it. Yeah. You're absolutely right. But as we move in, round six, Priestley soloing B once again. It's kind of a 2-2 split here from Nobility, just playing for info. Potentially a bit of a scam from the side of the Saints, but nothing doing right now. That nade might connect for Brandon. Nope, it won't, so no info gain. And Priestley can have his work cut out for him as Nobility start to make their way up towards the B Street. Priestley still with a cruise missile and not going to have to use it just yet. First blood spots the cross. Information and help. Brandon with a second kill and towards the round. The Renetti wow. just tagging Choco through the smoke. A clean four for the Saints. The round just began. That's going to be back to back for St. Clair as they secure themselves a defense and a little bit of a gap now in their lead. A little bit of a gap indeed. And well, we saw it similar in game number two, the back and forth rounds, two in a row, two in a row. Same trend, exactly where we were in game two, 4-2 yeah. right now. I think that was just a little too rash for Nobility Rising. Mm -hmm. Nobody really taking that time to watch for Brandon. Everybody just pedaled to the metal trying to throw gas down onto Priestley, but you're really just feeding into him now, 12-2. and two. Yeah, I mean, they, they knew he was there, and they just tried to play for him, but you're right, they didn't really consider much else. And now, St. Clair... Back on offense, leaning towards B again, but it looks like they could potentially be trapped once more, but you see no pressure from Nobility towards mid or even down low. They've been so good on Conwa. the flank, but Conwa with the huge two, that's bombed down as well. So now you talk about stuck, that's exactly what the Saints are. And if anybody can turn this team around, it's Conwa. Seven and six so far has been playing lights out in this search and destroy, doing as much as he can really to give them chances. And they cannot miss out on this one. A 4v2. St. Clair trapped in the back of Treehouse. And a lot of arrows going to be watching this. You got to be worried about Justin sometimes. Those shots barely missing. But it's now just Priestley in a one versus four. And this should be where Nobility Rising start to set up a collapse. And they're not going to have to worry about this one. Priestley takes the fight to them. And it's going to gift a third round over towards Nobility Rising. So chipping away at that lead, they bring this to a one round deficit. Something we saw early in game two was the aggression from Conwell with the SMG in hand, was able to get up in inside their base or inside their setup even, and just disrupt things. And that's exactly what we saw just just then. And a free two-piece pretty much. They had no idea, they had no expectations of Conwa playing that aggressive role because really Nobility hasn't done that so far this game. No, they haven't. Except for the round where he pushed into Horace Gas, we'll say. Right, yes, yes. And then one. That's fair. You know, Conwa. Yeah, he's just feeling a little bit spicy sometimes. Get aggressive, and it's what you like to see from this player. So, St. Clair, maybe taking a page out of his book. Nacho's going to post up in towards B-Dom. He's just sitting beside the dumpster, and they have full middle map control. Conwa, though, is going to get away with this plant, and if he can stay alive, that is huge for Nobility to play this on 4v4. Yep, see Bendy trying to work the A Street, but he's just going to be insignificant as of right now. Get some shots in, nothing connecting. Taco spots one out, takes down Priestley. That's a massive kill, massive first blood as well. Nacho searching for that one. Didn't expect that second player in DVD. Gets tagged up. Brandon gets two-piece, though, towards the A site. One player is going to hop the bomb. That's going to be Brandon. Nate coming in. He's going to get tagged up. Can he finish it off? Bowie with a huge kill. 1v1. Now 1v1. 16 seconds. Nacho tracking down Bowie, but Bowie has it all going in his way. Favor. Get there. And the uh, round is one. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. Bowie, wow. I, you know, I didn't mind that play whatsoever. Yeah, yeah, Sliding honestly. over towards bus stop, uh, that is the right call. You know Nacho is chasing you down, so you just want to drain that time. Luckily, it is just enough time, but the dead slide, I, I, like, unfortunate. Unfortunate, yeah. like, it, that happens. That happens. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunate for Nacho. Came so, so close to putting their team on game point. 5-3 looks a lot different than 4-4. It does. And here we go. Best of well, best of three down the stretch here in the search and destroy. It is 4-4. Still Priestley sitting on that cruise missile too. When does St. Clair decide to invest this streak? I mean, they don't want that Penjal Day streak. 
That's for sure. <laughs> but, As, I mean, you see the beast three wide open right now for St. Clair, and they're taking advantage. Exactly. And slowly and surely, Nobility are actually collapsing on a flank here, too. It's Kanwa and Risky taking their time at clearing out the spawn of St. Clair. So, again, Saints just kind of putting themselves in a situation where they're going to shoot their way out of this bomb site. Yep, it's going to be a straight up 4v4 on B. You don't get a lot of those. But here we go. Two players for Nobility Rising on the pinch. Two coming in from their side. Risky draws first blood, top blue. Nacho's got the info. Looking for that player. Risky going to drop down. Not sure if Nacho sees. Oh, now he, he does. So this could be huge. Risky spots him out. Nacho gets the kill, though. Now 3v3. Bendy on the other side gets one back for himself. Bowie and Choco, though, bringing this into a 1v2. Nacho, three in a row. Going to have to make it five for the win. And they're going to hop this bomb, so Nacho's going to have to find an angle for this one. They jump off of it. No, they do not. The defuse wow. is made. Nobility rising. They stick it. And that is going to be a swing in their favor. Map five in the series. Now Nobility rising. A chance to close it out. Just not enough bullets for Nacho. Two opportunities for him to clutch. He played the right angle. He did. Almost finished the kill, just ran out of ammo and pulled out the red and Eddie, just not in time. And now Nobility, they're back on offense, but they are on match point for a chance to win their spot in the grand finals. Nacho, oh, he just misses it. He's on the run, trying to stay alive, goes back in. Oof, team kill drawn. So all things considered, could have been worse for Nacho. That is going to slow down Nobility Rising, who are playing a lot different this time. They have a player watching the push through B, Choco, making sure that nobody can flank for free. Yeah, that'll make Nobility think a little bit more. Risky gets tagged up and can't get away. Bendy with a huge kill in the middle of the map, and now a 2v3. It's going to be Bowie and Choco, who's been so good all day long. Can they get the job done? Can they close it out, or will St. Clair force a round 11? That's the big question. Bomb is down. Bowie's going to pick it up. Choco hoping for a mistake through mid. Bowie waiting just alongside him. 33 seconds is a lot of time here in search and destroy, but it's all down to Bowie now. 1v3 slides out. It's just not to be. Would you have it any other way? Are you not entertained? 5-5 five, five in game five. We're going to round 11 for a chance at the grand finals. $1,000 on the line. You can tell how much both teams want this one. Back and forth we go in these search and destroys. St. Clair forcing the round 11 off of the back of a huge round from Brandon. Nobility, they are going to be back on offensive offense as well. So that 12 piece from Priestley right now is sure helping things. Still has the cruise missile too. Yeah, very good point. So off the draw here, attacking side for Nobility Rising. Bomb leading towards A, and nobody's actually watching in towards Cafe. So a lot of pressure here. Nacho hoping to get one in this position. Bendy waiting for the information. Smoke's going to go down, and here we go. Nacho, no eyes on. Bendy's in a little bit of pressure here, but Nobility Rising, they disengage. Yeah, you see how deep Priestley's playing. That streak's gonna get called in here any second. Nacho draws first blood. Gonna get second is Bendy. Nacho looking for the third, but Bowie gets two back for himself. Brandon and Priestley, the OG team, trying and, to even this back out. And now for St. Clair, separated are Priestley and Brandon. Isolated 1v1s for Nobility to have to deal with, but Priestley's gonna call in this streak, and this is a chance to put the nail in the coffin. Here comes the streak. Brandon gets that player across again. That streak coming into broken, but no. At, at the very least, that's information gained. Bowie, 1v2, needs to get the bomb and get it down. Gonna get cut down, and St. Clair clutch up when they need to, and they will be moving on to the grand finals. And look at that. Bendy's getting up, getting hype for the team. That was stressful as could be for both parties, but fist bumps across the stage now. St. Clair take down Nobility Rising, and they move to our TXP3 Grand Finals. Pulsive waiting for them as their challenger. But what a series we had. What a game we had. And it comes down to a 2v2. Bowie almost feeding that back to his team. Yeah. The double kill makes it a 2v2. They have Bomb in their hand. The wrap over towards B was the right call. A was on lock. 
The only thing is Priestley holding on to that cruise missile all the way to that round 11. No Penj all day cruise missile was seen in the round 11 <laughs> this time around. They yeah. isolate those two members of Nobility Rising and Brandon set up for success in that round. Makes it a 1v2 and there is nothing Bowie could have done with no. the way that Priestley played that one. So patient over towards that convoy tank. Right, that is impressive for the Saints. Yeah, I mean, Bowie did everything he could. Nacho and Bendy draw first blood. Bowie gets both of them right back. Yeah. And again, Brandon and, and Priestley separated out of the map, but they waited nine rounds to use that cruise missile, and boy, did it pay off. They caught Choco trying to cross into the ice cream. Brandon there to pick him up. Just beautifully set up all around. It was, and now for the likes of Nobility Rising, they're going to walk away in third place of TXP3. we got to give some uh, flowers over towards this team because oh, yeah. uh, what a weekend they've had. I mean, playing both in towards the Cup this weekend as well as this tournament, you know, fighting two separate battles at the same exact time and making it all the way to this position. Taking Dallin St. Clair back in towards that winner's round one, beating St. Clair on Rio twice yeah. for that hard point. Their hard points look fantastic for the side of Nobility Rising. A little bit of cleanup for the Search and Destroy, especially over towards that Karachi, but all things considered, this team came out to, to Windsor, came to Canada to play this local, and they looked fantastic. They absolutely did, and you know, it's a very confident team, and they when they, they play with confidence, again, they, they're they almost unbeatable. A couple of game fives for them, uh, falling short both times, unfortunately, for them, but very impressive impor uh, performance. Conwa, a familiar guy within the local scene uh, and the local tournament scene at that, um, really making his mark once again, a very yeah. impressive performance. A third place, you go home with $500, so not a, not a bad uh, take home. Not bad at all. A little bit of that prize going over there, and there was no doubt in my mind when you look at this tournament. I mean, uh, top four, we talked about it yesterday. You're thinking, you know, St. Clair, Pulsive, Nobility, and Chaos. And uh, we didn't get to see Chaos make it over towards there with yeah. the players that they had. It's uh, Penjolte pushing in towards that top four. Big representation there for some Canada locals. We love to see that. But Absolutely. Nobility showing that this top three between St. Clair, Pulsive, and Nobility Rising, it is neck and neck. It so could have been anybody's game. Two game fives across the lower and winner's final. Almost a reverse sweep from that Nobility team. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, they're just not able to clutch up in those search and destroys, and that is going to be a tough one, I'm sure, when they're thinking back at this tournament. But a lot of respect being shown from both these sides, Aaron, and that's going to set things up for the grand finals here at TXP in the heart of Windsor at St. Clair College. We got the trophy on the line now. Big game coming up after this break. Pulsive versus St. Clair. You don't want to miss it, folks. Go get your snacks because we'll be back soon.